Now, ladies and gentlemen, Maxwell House takes a real pleasure in introducing a young man who's one of the most popular actors in Hollywood, a favorite with the ladies and also with the men, a dynamic dancer, a grand singer, all in all, the best-liked young fellow who ever left all Ireland to come to Hollywood. And, and might... it is my proud and happy duty to be here, V. Javis. When I left you, Kenny... Get the shamrocks out of your hair and go away. I was introducing George Murphy. Oh, and faith, and who could tell that? Your introduction fitted me like the county cork fits the bottleneck of the River Shannon Begora. <laughs> oh, Frank, you don't have to put on that broken-down Irish brogue. The elections are over. Elections? Yes, and incidentally, where did you wind up in the senatorial race? I was scratched. Oh. No. Uh, the Republicans have been tampering with my script here. I... <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't care about the election anyway. Bob, it was an off year, you know, and I'm saving my real strength for 1940. Oh, now, don't tell me you're going to run for senator again in 1940. <laughs> oh, senator, a post for a stooge. In 1940, I'm going to answer my country's highest summons. Oh, Washington is calling. What? I said Washington is calling. Okay, put them on. Deposit four dollars, please. <laughs> Wrong number. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, uh... <laughs> Yes, Bob, I'll be in the White House in 1940, don't worry. I've got my campaign all planned, so I'll wind up in the presidential chair. If it's as good as your senatorial campaign, you'll wind up in a chair, all right. Yes, magpie. <laughs> I shall campaign as our first president campaign, sir, by living in peace and dignity on my country estate and hunting the fox. All right, tell us how you make like a hunter, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Squire Morgan, sir. <laughs> Justice of the Peace, Master of the Foxhounds, and Lord of the Manor. Thwackby Castle, Slings Beyond Twine, Chunks Bite Monks, Hoop Slots Cramps, England. <laughs> oh, so your country estate is in England, eh, Senator? I mean, Squire. It was. I moved it recently at great expense, stone by stone and tree by tree, every blade of grass. And have located it now on a beautiful 6,000 acre tract. Sewers, gas, and sidewalks at Peapack, New Jersey. Peapack? Oh, uh, beautiful Peapack. I chose it primarily for its healthful climate, Bob. Wonderful for horses, for dogs, and for men. How about women? Oh, the woods are full of them. <laughs> but you should see my kennels. 150 couples of the finest hunting dogs ever bred. Mm. I've hunted them all over the country, and no matter what strange place I take them to, they always bag the fox. Do you use the Greyhound? Yes, it's cheaper to ride on the bus. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got some wonderful pedigreed dogs, Bob. There's one particular dog I'd like you to meet someday. <laughs> if she wasn't so particular. Oh, thanks. Well, she's a beautiful female Dalmatian, and her name is Outboard Motor. Outboard Motor? Yes, you know, pup, 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 oh. pup. You've never seen such a dog, Bob. Five hands high, well sprung, short hocks, high rough, feathered fetlocks, and an 18-inch rumble seat. Does she burn much gas? Most economical dog I ever owned. I raised her from a pump. I mean a pump. A pup. And I taught her to recognize every different kind of game there is. Not only that, but for every animal, she has a separate bark. For instance? Well, if I take her into the field and she sends a quail, she goes like this. Wait, wait. You thought of that, huh? Yes, in two weeks. But that's just the quail bark. For rabbits, she does... How does she bark for fox? Zana, zana. <laughs> well, so long. But I've got to see a man about... Come here, come here. Wait a minute, Gunner. If you're such a terrific dog fancier, there's a fellow I want you to meet. Hey, Merton. Mm. George, come in. Bob, I'm glad to see you. Very glad to see you, Bob. How are you, Pop? <laughs> are you addressing me, upstart? No, nah, no. Nah, get off your horse, Squire. You know George Murphy. But maybe you didn't know that George is the smartest amateur dog breeder and trainer in California. Eh, dog of a trainer. Yes, sir. Yes, well, I'll be moving along. I've got to see you, fellow. Frank, come, come, here. come here. What? Tell Murphy about some of the dogs you've trained. Eh, uh, that I... Yeah. Uh, Go on, Pop. Oh, just well, a few. Well, now that you don't have to, I'm not. 
Uh, let me see. I, uh, I don't suppose you ever trained a wolfhound, did you, George? I trained two wolfhounds to be clowns in the circus. Uh, mm. Oh, you, you did. Uh, you never trained any Bedlington Terriers, did you? Taught a two-month-old Bedlington to read and write once. Read and write? <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know everything about dogs, don't you? Uh, I guess so. I wrote five books about them. <laughs> uh, Here's Squire. Here's Squire. <laughs> oh, you oh, dogs. Uh, horse, uh, bird, uh, fish. Uh, oh, gold, goldfish. Murphy, do you know anything about training goldfish? No, I can't say that I do. Oh, there's an intelligent animal. Oh. <laughs> What's the use? It's goldfish now. Well, if a man hasn't handled goldfish, he has no license to call himself an animal trainer. Yeah. Let's see a license, uh, buddy. Well, I... Let's see a license, uh, buddy. Well, I suppose you think it's impossible for a human being to train a goldfish. It is. But I did it. <laughs> hey, Murphy, that's a nice shirt you have on. I once had a goldfish. You like it, Brian? The Christmas present for my wife. Well, he used well, to swim. I had a gold. I haven't got much taste in ties, but I just wear them. I can't tell these lies unless I have absolute quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? All right, Squire. Go ahead with your fish story. Yes. Well, the thing about this little goldfish, Bob, was his beautiful personality. When I first bought him, he learned to recognize my footsteps and leap to the surface whenever I approached. Later, with infinite care and patience, I taught the little fellow to eat out of my hand. <laughs> Go on, Frank. Well, the first thing you know, the goldfish got so fond of me that when he'd finished eating, he didn't want to go back in his bowl. And so I'd take him with me. Put him in my pocket till I got back home. Bob, the guy has goldfish in his pocket. And yeah, we got silverfish in the rug. I... The little... The little fellow spent more and more time in my pocket until one night he refused to return to his bowl at all. What a predicament. I let him sleep with me that night, but the next day I went right out and bought him a bird cage. A bird cage for a goldfish? Yeah, oh, you should have seen him up there on his little perch, swinging back and forth, back and forth, and whistling as if his little heart would burst for joy. The fish was whistling? Yeah, just sn short snatches of... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fancy, but he was perfectly happy in his cage. In fact, I could go away for days and leave him swinging on his perch. Then one day while I was away, it happened. What happened, Frank? Well, the little fish fell into the bird bath and drowned. Well, oh. so long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Here's something all of our listeners always enjoy. A brand new ballad sung for us by Doug McPhail. It's called Midnight on the Trail. On the trail I'm never alone. Though the midnight sounds are strange, I'm content and peaceful on my beloved range. It's midnight on the trail, the night wind blowing free, my faithful horse and me riding. Midnight on the trail, a world so new and strange, my old heart seems to change, riding on wide open spaces, the canyon's wall, a million places. The sky grow pale I dream of one delight To ride again at midnight on the trail Oh, give me a home Where the buffalo roam Where the deer and the eye Hello, play. Where seldom is heard a 
discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day Midnight on the trail The night wind blowing free My faithful horse and me riding The sky grow pale I dream of one delight To 